Have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. In recent years, the name Jeffrey Epstein has become synonymous with scandal, corruption, and unspeakable crimes. What was the crime of which you were convicted? A soliciting prostitution and procuring a minor for prostitution. With the recent developments in his case, there is a renewed interest in unraveling the dark secrets surrounding this enigmatic figure and, more importantly, shedding light on the fate of his victims. But what happened to Epstein's victims? It was a wicked time in my life. It was a really scary time in my life. Who were these young women? And how did they find themselves entangled in his web of abuse? In this video, I will tell you what happened to Jeffrey Epstein's victims. Virginia Jufrey. Born as Virginia Louise Roberts, she faced a troubled home life marked by abuse and instability. At a young age, she found herself running away from home, seeking refuge on the unforgiving streets. Hunger and further abuse became her constant companions. But fate had a different plan for Virginia. At the age of 14, she reunited with her father and began working at Mar-a-Lago, a luxurious resort owned by none other than Donald Trump. It was during her time there that she would cross paths with a man who would change her life forever, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein took a keen interest in Virginia. He saw in her vulnerability an opportunity for exploitation. Under the guise of providing her with a better life, Epstein lured her into his web of manipulation and control. Virginia's introduction to Epstein opened the doors to a world of unimaginable wealth and power. She became closely associated with him and his associate, Ghislaine Maxwell, between 2000 and 2002. Virginia found herself shuttling between Epstein's opulent residences in Palm Beach and Manhattan, as well as his sprawling ranch in New Mexico and his notorious private island. During this time, Virginia experienced the unimaginable. She was trafficked to Epstein's powerful associates, including politicians, businessmen, and even royalty. The private jets and lavish lifestyles masked the dark reality of her existence as a pawn in Epstein's sick game. In 2002, Virginia made the courageous decision to break free from Epstein and Maxwell's grip. She moved to Australia with her husband, hoping to leave her traumatic past behind. However, the scars of her experiences remained, and she knew she had to fight for justice. Jufri's first legal battle came in 2015, when she sued Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's longtime associate, for defamation. She alleged that Maxwell had made derogatory comments about her, further adding to the trauma she had endured. The case was settled under seal in 2017, but it marked the beginning of Jufre's relentless pursuit of justice. In 2019, Jufre filed a defamation lawsuit against prominent lawyer Alan Dershowitz, who had been a member of Epstein's legal team. She accused him of making false statements to discredit her and protect Epstein. However, the case was dismissed in 2022, leaving Jufre disappointed but undeterred. One of the most high-profile lawsuits Jufre pursued was against Prince Andrew. In 2021, she filed a civil lawsuit, seeking justice for the abuse she endured as a minor. The case was allowed to proceed in 2022, but before it could go to trial, it was settled out of court in February 2022. The terms of the settlement remain confidential. Throughout her legal battles, Jufre's allegations received significant media attention. She appeared in interviews and documentaries, bravely sharing her experiences of being trafficked by Epstein and his associates. Her courage inspired others to come forward with their own stories, shedding light on the extent of Epstein's abuse and the powerful individuals involved. Jufre's advocacy work extended beyond the courtroom. She founded non-profit organizations such as Victims Refuse, Silence and Speak Out, Act, Reclaim, dedicated to supporting survivors of sex trafficking and raising awareness about the issue. Her relentless efforts have played a crucial role in bringing attention to the dark underbelly of sex trafficking and holding those responsible accountable. Johanna Schoberg. Among the countless survivors who have come forward, one name stands out, Johanna Schoberg. It was during her time in college that Johanna caught the attention of Maxwell, who saw in her the perfect candidate for Epstein's twisted desires. Under the guise of offering her the opportunity of a lifetime, Maxwell approached Johanna with an offer she couldn't refuse. She was promised a job working for Epstein, a chance to be part of his inner circle. Intrigued and unaware of the horrors that awaited her, Johanna accepted the offer. She believed that this was her chance to gain valuable experience and make connections in the world of high society. Little did she know that she was stepping into a nightmare. As Johanna began her work for Epstein, she quickly realized that things were not as they seemed. 
she was introduced to Emmy Taylor, who would become her mentor in the art of giving massages. But these were not ordinary massages. They were massages that would lead to much darker and more sinister acts. Under the watchful eye of Maxwell and Taylor, Johanna was trained to please Epstein in ways that went far beyond the boundaries of professional conduct. She was taught how to bring him to orgasm during these so-called massages, a task that left her feeling violated and degraded. But the horrors didn't end there. Johanna also found herself at the center of a disturbing incident involving Prince Andrew. While at Epstein's Manhattan mansion, she was subjected to the unthinkable. Prince Andrew touched her breast with a puppet. It was a moment that would forever haunt Johanna. Johanna's testimony became a crucial piece of evidence in the legal battle against Epstein and Maxwell. Her detailed accounts of the massages, the pressure to please Epstein, and the disturbing incident with Prince Andrew provided a chilling glimpse into the dark world of the wealthy and powerful. As her deposition was made public, Johanna's story reverberated around the world. People were shocked and appalled by the extent of Epstein's depravity and the complicity of those around him. The media picked up on the story and Johanna's name became synonymous with the fight for justice. But the road to justice was not an easy one. Johanna faced scrutiny, doubt, and even victim blaming. Some questioned her motives, while others tried to discredit her testimony. Yet, Johanna remained steadfast in her pursuit of truth and justice. Her bravery inspired other survivors to come forward, knowing that they were not alone in their experiences. Together, they formed a united front against Epstein and Maxwell, determined to bring them to justice and prevent further harm to others. Do 107 Next, we will delve into the dark secrets surrounding one of his alleged victims, known as Doe 107. But before we unveil her story, let's recap the background and context of this infamous case. Jeffrey Epstein, a wealthy financier and convicted sex offender, rose to prominence in the early 2000s. He was known for his connections to powerful individuals in politics, business, and entertainment. But behind his lavish lifestyle and influential circle, Epstein harbored a sinister secret. In 2008, Epstein faced federal charges of sex trafficking and conspiracy to engage in sex trafficking of minors. Shocking revelations emerged during the trial, exposing a vast network of underage girls who were lured into his web of exploitation. Epstein's crimes spanned across his luxurious homes in Manhattan, Palm Beach, and his private island in the Caribbean. It was on this island, known as Little St. James, that he allegedly carried out his most heinous acts. Epstein's connections to high-profile individuals, including politicians, businessmen, and even members of the British royal family, added another layer of intrigue to the case. The extent of his network and the potential involvement of these individuals sent shockwaves through society. In 2019, Epstein was arrested again on federal sex trafficking charges. However, just a month after his arrest, he was found dead in his Manhattan jail cell, officially ruled as suicide. His death left many unanswered questions and denied his victims the opportunity for justice. Amidst the chaos and media frenzy surrounding the Epstein case, one alleged victim emerged, known only as Doe 107. On a fateful day, Doe 107's attorney filed a request in front of Manhattan federal judge Loretta Preska, urging the court to keep her identity secret. Doe 107's attorney argued that she lived outside the United States in a culturally conservative country and feared the consequences of her name being released. The attorney emphasized that Doe 107 faced real risks of physical harm, adding another layer of urgency to the request. Judge Loretta Preska, presiding over the case, recognized the gravity of the situation and asked Doe 107 to provide an affidavit supporting her claims of danger and the receipt of hate mail. However, Doe 107 failed to meet the deadline, leaving her case in a precarious position. As news of Doe 107's plea spread, speculation ran rampant on social media. People began to wonder who she could possibly be and what her connection to Epstein might entail. Some even claimed that the full Epstein list would not be released until January 22nd, heightening the anticipation surrounding Doe 107's identity. After Doe 107 failed to provide the requested affidavit by the deadline, her case took a complicated turn. It is said that she later switched attorneys, further adding to the mystery surrounding her identity and intentions. Meanwhile, on social media platforms, speculation about Doe 107's true identity ran wild. People shared theories and rumors, and even claimed to have insider information. The public's curiosity and desire to uncover the truth reached a fever pitch. 
Carolyn Andriano. For Carolyn Andriano, the abuse began in 2001 when she was just 14 years old. Epstein's Palm Beach mansion became a house of horrors where Carolyn's innocence was shattered and her life forever altered. The abuse continued for four long years as Carolyn endured the unimaginable. She was trapped in a cycle of manipulation and fear, unable to escape Epstein's clutches. But Carolyn's story didn't end there. Years later, she found the strength to come forward and testify against Epstein's accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell, in a trial that captivated the world. Carolyn's testimony painted a vivid picture of the horrors she endured at the hands of Epstein. She spoke of her addiction to pain, pills, and cocaine, substances she turned to in an attempt to block out the trauma inflicted upon her. Despite her courage and resilience, Carolyn Andriano's journey took a tragic turn. On May 23rd, she was found dead in a hotel room in West Palm Beach, Florida. The cause of her death was determined to be an accidental overdose of methadone, fentanyl, and alprazolam. Carolyn's passing marked yet another devastating loss among Epstein's victims. Lee Sky Patrick, another survivor, had also succumbed to a fatal overdose in 2017. The toll of Epstein's abuse extended far beyond the physical and psychological trauma inflicted upon his victims. It claimed lives, leaving families shattered and communities in mourning. Carolyn's death left behind a trail of heartbreak and unanswered questions. She was a wife, a mother of five children, and a daughter. Her loved ones were left to grapple with the pain of losing her and the aftermath of her tragic demise. Legal battles ensued over Carolyn's estate, further adding to the heartache and turmoil. Her will, signed in 2010, named her mother and two oldest children as beneficiaries. However, her marriage to John Pitts Jr. and the birth of three more children complicated matters. The resolution of these legal disputes remains ongoing. Carolyn's passing serves as a stark reminder of the lasting impact of Epstein's abuse. It is a testament to the profound trauma inflicted upon his victims and the struggles they face long after the abuse has ended. Lee Sky Patrick Lee Sky Patrick was one of Epstein's victims, a young girl whose life would be forever changed by her encounters with Epstein. Lee Sky Patrick, like many others, was drawn into Epstein's world through a mutual acquaintance. At first, she was flattered by his attention and promises of a glamorous lifestyle. Little did she know that she was stepping into a nightmare that would haunt her for years to come. Epstein, a master manipulator, knew exactly how to prey on vulnerable young girls like Lee Sky Patrick. He used his wealth, power, and connections to lure them into his web of deceit. Once under his control, he would subject them to unspeakable acts of sexual abuse. Lee Sky Patrick's initial encounters with Epstein were filled with promises of a better life. She was introduced to a world of luxury, rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous. But behind the scenes, a sinister reality awaited her. Epstein's opulent properties became the backdrop for Lee Sky Patrick's nightmare. She was forced to engage in sexual acts against her will, often in the presence of other powerful individuals who were also part of Epstein's sick circle. The psychological trauma inflicted upon her was immense, and it would have lasting effects on her life. The manipulation and control Epstein exerted over Lee Sky Patrick were relentless. He made her believe that she had no way out, and that no one would believe her if she spoke up. Fear and intimidation kept her silent for years, trapped in a cycle of abuse. It wasn't until years later, when the truth about Epstein's crimes began to emerge, that Lee Sky Patrick found the courage to break her silence. She knew that she had to speak out, not just for herself, but for all the other victims who suffered at the hands of this predator, Lee Gee Sky. Patrick's bravery in coming forward was met with skepticism and doubt from some, but she stood firm in her truth, determined to expose the dark secrets of Epstein's world. The abuse Lee Sky Patrick suffered at the hands of Epstein left her scarred both physically and emotionally. The psychological trauma inflicted upon her was unimaginable, she lived in constant fear, haunted by the memories of the abuse she endured. Lee Sky Patrick's life became a constant battle to suppress the pain and anguish she carried within her. The manipulation and control Epstein exerted over her had shattered her sense of self-worth and left her feeling trapped and powerless. Seeking solace and healing, Lee Sky Patrick turned to therapy. She embarked on a long and arduous journey to reclaim her life, to rebuild the shattered pieces of her identity. But the scars of her past were deep, and the road to recovery was filled with obstacles. 
Despite her best efforts, Lee Sky Patrick struggled to escape the clutches of Epstein's abuse. The trauma she endured had a profound impact on her relationships, her mental health, and her overall well-being. Tragically, the weight of her experiences became too much for Lee Sky Patrick to bear. She found herself caught in a downward spiral, battling addiction and emotional turmoil. The pain she carried within her was unbearable. On that fateful day, Lee Sky Patrick's battle came to a devastating end. She succumbed to a heroin overdose, leaving behind a shattered family and a world robbed of her potential. Lee Sky, Patrick's twin sister, devastated by the loss, firmly believes that her sister's tragic demise can be directly attributed to the abuse she suffered at the hands of Jeffrey Epstein. The pain and suffering Lee Sky Patrick endured throughout her life ultimately led to this heartbreaking outcome. Rachel Benavidze. Rachel Benavidze's story is one of resilience and courage, a journey that began with the painful memories of childhood sexual abuse. As a young child, Rachel experienced events that no child should ever have to endure. However, like many victims, she struggled to find the tools and support to cope with the trauma as she grew older. It was only when Rachel decided to write a book sharing her true story that she found the strength to confront her past and break the cycle of shame and silence. The decision to come forward was not an easy one as she feared judgment and the real opening of old wounds, but Rachel knew that her story had the power to protect other children from experiencing the same horrors she had endured. With the arrest of Jeffrey Epstein, Rachel realized the weight of her responsibility to speak out and share her experiences. Her book became an accumulation of personal journeys, shedding light on the abuse she suffered as a child and the unfortunate events that unfolded at Zorro Ranch. Through her writing, Rachel aims to heal herself and create a path towards self-love and awareness. Rachel Benavides's journey of healing and empowerment empowerment has not been without its share of haunting experiences. Her nightmares have become vivid and intrusive, seeping into her everyday life and leaving a lasting impact. In these dream sequences, Rachel finds herself transported to a serene garden, adorned with French doors, fountains, and a mesmerizing arrangement of wind chimes. Each chime creates haunting notes, carried by the whispers of the wind or the screams of her past. It is in this ethereal setting that Rachel's journey takes a surreal turn. One fateful morning, just before dawn, Dawn, Rachel is awakened by the sound of her name being called, followed by a perfect melody from a massive chime. The ghostly vibrations fill the air, evoking a sense of both eeriness and beauty. Rachel wonders if the spirit world is reaching out to her, acknowledging her pain and resilience. But as the dream continues, a darker presence emerges, rattling Rachel's bones and casting a shadow of deception. In glittery nights where gold seems to lie, this dark force lures her into its grasp, leaving her feeling vulnerable and unsettled. Sarah Ransom. Sarah's introduction to Epstein's dark empire began with an invitation to his lavish mansion. At first, she was captivated by the opulence and the influential people she encountered, but soon, the true nature of Epstein's intentions became clear. He was not just a wealthy financier, he was a master manipulator, preying on vulnerable young women and girls. As Sarah delved deeper into Epstein's web, she found herself trapped in a world of unimaginable horrors. She became a victim of his insatiable appetite for power and control, the abuse she endured was beyond comprehension. She was ripped, degraded, and coerced into unspeakable acts. Epstein's mansion became a prison, and Sarah's body became a commodity to be bought and sold. The psychological manipulation was just as devastating as the physical abuse. Epstein used fear and intimidation to maintain his control over Sarah and the other victims. He made them believe that they were worthless, that no one would believe their stories, and that they had no way out. Sarah's spirit was crushed as she felt trapped and helpless in the clutches of this monster. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months of unimaginable suffering. Epstein's abuse knew no boundaries. Sarah was forced to endure the most degrading and humiliating acts, all while Epstein reveled in his power over her. The pain and trauma she experienced were indescribable, leaving scars that would last a lifetime. But Sarah's story is not just one of victimhood, it is a story of resilience and strength. Despite the trauma she endured, Sarah found the courage to fight back. She refused to let Epstein's darkness consume her. With every ounce of strength she had left, she began to plan her escape. One fateful day, Sarah seized an opportunity to break free from Epstein's clutches. She managed to escape the mansion and find her way to safety. It was a moment of triumph, but the scars of her ordeal would never truly fade away. Sarah's escape marked the beginning of her journey towards justice and healing. In the next section, we will explore the legal battles she faced and the emotional turmoil she endured as she fought to bring Epstein and his accomplices 
accomplices to justice. Stay tuned for the shocking continuation of Sarah Ransom's story. Kiki Doe. It was the late 1990s, a time when New York City was a beacon of hope and opportunity for young, ambitious individuals seeking fame and fortune. Among them was Kiki Doe, a 19-year-old girl from Texas who arrived in the city with dreams of becoming the next big model. Little did she know, her journey would take a dark and twisted turn. Kiki found herself living in a model's apartment in Midtown on the infamous 42nd Street. It was a sprawling apartment where at any given time, there could be 3 to 20 girls, all around the same age, chasing their dreams in the big city. They were alone, far from home, and vulnerable. In this apartment, Kiki experienced the harsh reality of the modeling industry. It was a cutthroat world where beauty was both a currency and a curse. But amidst the fierce competition, there was a glimmer of hope, the promise of success and connections that could catapult them to stardom. To make ends meet, Kiki took a job as a hostess in a legendary coffee shop, a place known for hiring models and actresses. It was here that she would encounter a recruiter, a young and beautiful blonde who seemed to hold the key to a better future. The recruiter was captivated by Kiki's beauty and wasted no time in approaching her. She saw potential, an opportunity to introduce Kiki to a man she referred to as her client. This man, she claimed, had ties to the fashion industry and was friends with supermodels. It seemed like a dream come true. Kiki, desperate for a breakthrough, weighed her options. She had no experience in massage, but the recruiter assured her that it didn't matter. The man simply had a preference for young and pretty girls. With her financial situation dire, Kiki saw the this as a chance for a helping hand. The day of the appointment arrived, Kiki nervously made her way to the address provided by the recruiter. The maid answered the door, her demeanor cold and distant. Kiki followed her into an elevator, ascending to the second floor. As the doors opened, she stepped into a world she could never have imagined. Walking into the room, Kiki's unease grew. She felt a sense of entrapment, as if the walls were closing in on her. And then, Jeffrey Epstein entered, wrapped in a towel. His presence sent shivers down her spine, but she tried to maintain composure. Epstein, seemingly unfazed by the gravity of his actions, engaged Kiki in casual conversation. He asked her name, where she was from, as if it were just another day at the office. But for Kiki, it was a moment of terror, knowing what awaited her. With trembling hands, Kiki began to massage Epstein, her lack of experience evident. She felt like she was failing, that he would be displeased. But little did she know, this was just the beginning of a nightmare she could never have imagined. Epstein's demands escalated quickly. He ordered Kiki to undress, her fear intensifying with each passing moment. She complied, trembling with terror as her vulnerability was exposed. As Kiki stood there, vulnerable and exposed, Jeffrey Epstein's true intentions became clear. What started as a seemingly innocent massage quickly turned into a horrifying assault. The smile on Epstein's face sent chills down Kiki's spine as he reveled in the power he held over her. Kiki, trembling with fear, felt violated and terrified. This was her first intimate experience, and it was marred by the the cruelty of a man who took pleasure in inflicting pain. She knew she had to make a choice, to fight, to run, or to freeze. After the assault, Epstein callously handed Kiki $200, as if it were a mere transaction. He left the room, leaving her alone with the weight of what had just transpired. The maid returned, letting her out, and Kiki was left to grapple with the confusion and disbelief that consumed her. Overwhelmed by the trauma she had endured, Kiki reached out to her mother, tears streaming down her face. She pleaded for her mother to come and rescue her from this nightmare. The once vibrant and hopeful young woman was shattered, forever changed by the horrors she had experienced. Back home, Kiki struggled to find solace. The walls of her childhood home felt suffocating. As she grappled with the fact that she was no longer the same person who had left for New York City, the memories of that fateful day haunted her as she tried to diminish their impact in her mind. Seeking closure and healing, Kiki's therapist suggested that certain memories might resurface if she returned to the place where the trauma occurred. And so, with a mix of trepidation and determination, Kiki decided to confront her demons and revisit Epstein's mansion. Standing outside the mansion, Kiki could still see Epstein's face in her mind. It was as if he was still lurking behind those doors, a constant reminder of the darkness she had endured. The sensation was eerie, as if the mansion itself held a malevolent presence. Kiki couldn't help but wonder why the maid, who seemed to know what was going to happen, remained silent. She pondered why someone who had the power to help others chose to stay silent, allowing the cycle of abuse to continue. It was a question that haunted her, a question that spoke to the complicity of those around Epstein. Courtney Wilde 
It all began in July 2019, when Courtney Wilde, a survivor of Jeffrey Epstein's abuse, received a life-changing phone call from her friend Brad. Little did she know that this call would mark the beginning of a long-awaited turning point in her fight for justice. Courtney vividly recalls the moment she received the news. She was walking down a busy street, going about her day when her phone rang. It was Brad, his voice filled with excitement and disbelief. Courtney's initial reaction was a mix of shock and disbelief. The news seemed too good to be true, but deep down, she knew that this was a pivotal moment, the moment she had been waiting for, for years. To understand the significance of this arrest, we must go back in time. Courtney's journey as a survivor of Epstein's abuse began when she was just a 14-year-old girl. Epstein lured vulnerable young girls into his web of manipulation and exploitation. His lavish lifestyle and influential circle allowed him to operate with impunity for years. However, Epstein's reign of terror was not without scrutiny. In 2008, he faced charges of sex trafficking and abuse, but a controversial plea deal allowed him to escape severe punishment. For years, Epstein's victims, including Courtney, felt unheard and dismissed by the justice system. But that all changed in 2019, when new evidence emerged, reigniting the case against Epstein. The relentless efforts of journalists, survivors, and law enforcement finally led to Epstein's arrest. The authorities were determined to ensure that, this time, justice would be served. Epstein was taken into custody, and the world watched as the man who had evaded consequences for so long was finally held accountable. For Courtney, seeing Epstein in that courtroom brought back memories of her 14-year-old self. It was a moment that stirred up a whirlwind of emotions, both mentally and emotionally. But Courtney was no longer that young girl. Now, in her 30s, she was ready to fight back and ensure that Epstein would never harm another person again. When given the opportunity to address Epstein during his bail hearing, Courtney stood tall and spoke her truth, refusing to let his wealth and power intimidate her. Her words echoed through the courtroom, leaving Epstein Epstein unable to face her gaze. In that moment, Courtney reclaimed her power and took a stand against her abuser. The impact of Courtney's testimony, along with the powerful words of other survivors, influenced the judge's decision to deny Epstein bail. It was a crucial step towards ensuring that he would face the consequences of his actions. As Epstein was led away, Courtney and the other survivors felt a mix of emotions, sadness, anger, and a newfound sense of hope that this time, justice would prevail. Courtney's journey was far from over, but she knew that as long as survivors continued to speak up, Epstein would not escape the consequences of his heinous crimes. Amy McClure it was a sunny afternoon in New York City when McClure found herself in the opulent surroundings of Epstein's Manhattan mansion. She had agreed to give him a massage, unaware of the darkness that awaited her. As she entered the luxurious residence, little did she know that she was stepping into a web of manipulation and abuse. According to Amy McClure, embarrassed and ashamed and stupid, and that he got irritated, almost angry, when she told him she was 21. He said something like, You're too old. You're getting too old for this. What are you doing? McClure's innocence and trust were shattered in an instant as Epstein's true intentions became clear. What started as an awkward encounter quickly turned into a nightmare. McClure recalls the rapid escalation of the situation, from awkwardness to cruelty, and ultimately to The trauma inflicted upon McClure was not limited to the physical act of Epstein's manipulative tactics left a lasting impact on her psyche, forever altering the course of her life. But why did McClure choose to remain silent for so long? McClure's silence was born out of fear, shame, and a belief that justice would never be served. Little did she know that her story was just one piece of a much larger puzzle, a puzzle that would eventually expose Epstein's reign of terror. Over the years, more and more victims would come forward, shedding light on the dark secrets hidden behind Epstein's wealth and power. McClure's story, though one of the oldest allegations against Epstein would prove to be a crucial piece of the puzzle. McClure's words resonate with the countless victims who suffered at the hands of Epstein. Their dreams were shattered and their lives were forever scarred, but McClure's journey did not end with her silence. She made a decision to step out of the shadows and seek justice. McClure's determination to hold Epstein's accomplices accountable is a testament to her strength and resilience. As she joins the fight for justice, she stands alongside other survivors, demanding that their voices be heard. That brings us to the end of this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. For more videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.